Hello, welcome to React Quickly. This is chapter number 9. In this video, I will walk you through the creation of the weather app using React Native. So first of all, go to your terminal or command prompt and execute this command react-native space init space weather. This will create a new folder weather and uh, create a other folders inside of that folder and files as well that we need for iOS and Android development. I'm not going to execute this command. Instead, I will, uh, because I already have this application, instead I will just go to the editor and show you how to implement the rest of the application. Okay, so assuming you executed the command line and you have the scaffolding, let's go to index.ios.js file. I've already have some code here, so let me walk you through it. First of all, I want to import and instantiate all of these objects. We will be using them in uh, our file. And then I want to import search.ios.js. You do not have that file. We will implement it later together. And then I have some styles to save some time. Just copy it from the source code or uh, type it. We're not going to spend too much time on it. One interesting thing is that you can get the pixel ratio by using pixel ratio.get from the React library. So it's react.pixel ratio if you're using ES5 style. Uh, this is called destructuring from ES6 syntax. And the constant is also ES6 syntax. Okay, so if you read the chapter number 9 already, you know that there is a storage that I'm using. It's called async storage. But I want to abstract it. I don't want to use it directly in my component. So I would create this object storage. And I'm using ES6 uh, method notation that does not need a function word and does not need a colon. So I would create get from storage method that would call get item from async storage. And it's a promise, so I would uh, use dot then, get the value, and console log it, so I know what's happening. In the console log, I'm using the S6 uh, string template or interpolation, just a nicer way instead of using uh, concatenations. And if the value is, is not null, I want to call the callback. If the value is empty or falsy, I will call the callback with the null value. So that this is my method, it's just a little abstraction. Then I have the set in storage method. Again, I'm using the S6 notation. In this method, I'm console logging the value and the name. The name would be city name and the value would be whatever city name has been entered on the mobile screen. So this way we can store the city name for future uses. And I'm using async storage dot set item, just two arguments, name and value, very easy. Remove item is even easier. I'm just calling async storage dot remove item directly. Just reassigning that method, not even doing any checks or console logs. Okay. Now let's go ahead and implement the app component. If you had a weather component, uh, just get rid of your boilerplate code. This is how we would uh, create our app. This would be the main component for our app. And uh, the only thing it renders, you, actually it's a navigator, which is coming from the React class. Navigator will has a few properties. Initial route, it's an object, so we use double curly braces. Object that has properties name, just a string, search, index of zero, it's a number, and component, which is an object, which we imported from the search.ios.js file. And then the properties, which is an object in itself. I'm passing my storage that I just implemented. And that's pretty much it. So the first screen, the initial route, will be the search page or the search scene, the search screen that is coming from a different file. The ref equals navigator. That's how we can access this navigator object inside of the app component. 
I don't really use it right now, but just in case you want it, it's uh, this.refs.navigator. If you have some methods in the app component that you want to use, or maybe you want to push a new array from that method. And the navigation bar, it's uh, the top menu. The most important property in the navigation bar component is route mapper, and we will implement it next. Uh, render scene is the last uh, property of the navigator. It's really what it does, it renders every single scene, every single screen. So we have some logic, we will implement some logic that based on the route and route.component, it will render different components. So first we get the props, pass props, that's our properties, whatever we want to pass to this component. And then we add two more properties to this object. And let is, the, is just the ES6 uh, syntax instead of var. You can use let, it will respect your logic blocks like curly braces. So we add navigator name and the app, which is the app component of this. This transfers properly because I'm using fat arrows here, ES6 arrows. And I'm just returning create element route.component, comma props. So basically I'm creating a component based on whatever values I've passed to this uh, render scene. And uh, in the search you would see how that actually works. We would use that push method, navigator.push, and we would pass route. Okay, so now we need to implement the route mapper for the navigation bar. It's not really necessary, but it's nice to have that uh, top bar, like a one-liner with uh, two buttons, left, right, and uh, title in the middle. So let's do it, and uh, you could see how it, it is. So first of all, let's implement the left bus button method. This method will render the left button depending on uh, some logic. So first of all, if it's a zero, index scene, meaning it's our initial route or search, we don't want to do anything, so just return null, okay? And then the previous route equals navState.routeStack, and then we're using index minus one to determine the previous route. So for example, if we are on a forecast screen, which is a second screen or scene, then uh, the value of the previous route would be search. So this is how we can get the previous route. And then I'm using touchable opacity, which is similar to a link or an anchor tag in uh, Web React or HTML. Basically, that will enable the clickability, the touchability of, of the text. So on press, I want to do navigator.pop. What it does, it takes the last elements and gets rid of it. So basically, the current scene, the current route forecast, it will be removed, and we will revert to the previous one, which is search or our initial route homepage. In the text, I'm using angle brace to symbolize like going to the left, going to the, going back. You don't have to do it. You can just uh, use previous or something else like back. You don't even have to use previous route dot name. So it's very customizable. Now let's implement a right button, but really I'm not going to do anything there. I will just output an empty view. But if you want to put some code into it, you can use the similar approach. You can have an array of uh, routes and then do index plus one to determine the next route. You can get the name of that route again from an array. And the title is the text in the middle. It could be an image, of course. I'm just outputting the current route name using route.name for that. And uh, of course, this needs to be a JSX using text, style it. And this is how you can combine two styles together. You would just uh, create an array inside of the curly braces and uh, use comma and just you can use combine two styles this way. Route.name. So I've outputted it. That's going to be my uh, heading in my uh, navigation bar. And uh, these are the styles. So the interesting thing here is that we need to use stylesheet.create and then uh, just pass an array. It looks similar to CSS. You might guess some of the properties, what they mean. For example, color, that's obvious. Padding left, next. If you're 
done CSS for two days, you know what that means. Uh, some of the properties are not familiar to you, but they're not here, like flex, you would see them later. And then the last statement, uh, app registry. So if you had uh, something like weather here, change it to app. So this name must be exactly the same as the name of this component. Doesn't have to be app, but I just like to, to name, to give the meaningful names to my components.